Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Bhakti Softal Knowledge Tutorials. Today we will discuss about the surgical spaces of the orbit. It is important to know about the surgical spaces because the orbital lesions are usually confined to their spaces. Okay, they will not extend beyond those spaces most of the time. The second is, they exhibit a typical clinical features depending upon in which surgical space they occur. And the third is, to tackle these lesions, if you know the anatomy of these spaces, the orbitotomy or the approach becomes very easy. So without much delay, let's begin our video on the surgical spaces of the orbit. So, so as you all know, this is the orbit. Okay, so this is the bony orbit and this is the eyeball with the optic nerve situated inside the bony orbit. So inside this orbit, we have a very thin lining called as the periorbita, isn't it? So the periorbita is covering the inside of this bony orbit. And there is a potential space between these two lining that is the bone and the periorbita. And this space is called as the periorbital space. So these are the extraocular muscles which are inserting onto the sclera of the eyeball. Okay. So this is the lateral rectus muscle, medial rectus muscle and this is the superior rectus muscle in this view. And we have the intermuscular septum which is connecting these muscles. Right. So this space which is present between this periorbital space and this extraocular muscle is called as the peripheral space. So now if we just open this superior rectus muscle and see, we have a space inside, a conical space which is formed by these extraocular muscles. This conical space which is present behind this eyeball is called as the central space, also called as the retrobulbar space since it is there behind this eyeball. And you know, this eyeball is covered by a thin sheath called as the tenon's capsule which is extending from the limbus and covering the eyeball all over. So there lies a potential space again between this tenon's capsule and the eyeball or the sclera that is called as sub tenon space. Okay. So if you have not watched my video on the fascia bulbi, please do watch because there is a detailed description of this sub tenon space, the periorbita and these extraocular muscles and the intermuscular septa. Okay. So now we have these four spaces that is the peripheral space, central space and the sub tenon space. So these are the surgical spaces of the orbit. So let's see all these spaces in detail now. So when you are studying these surgical spaces, you should know the boundaries of the surgical space, what are the contents of this surgical space, the lesions which can occur in these spaces and how to approach this space. Okay. So, so coming to the first one, that is the subperiosteal space. As I told, it is a potential space. What is the meaning of this potential space? Potential space means the two surfaces are in opposition. In reality, if you see, there is no obvious space which is present between these two opposed surfaces. But if there is any lesion or some tumor which is forming there, then it will expand and leave a space. We have so many such um, potential spaces in our body and one such in the orbit is the subperiosteal space. So coming to the boundaries of the subperiosteal space, I have already explained where this subperiosteal space lies. So this is there just below the bony orbit and the periorbita. Okay, so what are the boundaries? So on the outer side we have the orbital bones, on the inner side we have the periorbita which is covering. So in between there is a space that is called as subperiosteal space, and anteriorly there is firm attachment of the periorbita to the orbital ring, and hence the space ends there anteriorly. Okay, as I told, it is a potential space. So coming to the lesions which can occur in the subperiosteal space, there can be dermoid cyst and epidermoid cyst. Okay mucosils, myelomas, osteomas and meningiomas, even the hematoma can form there and the fibrous dysplasia, okay. So the approach to this space depends upon where the lesion is, okay. Coming to the next space that is the peripheral space, I have already explained the boundaries here also. So to repeat once again, the boundaries are, so peripherally we have the periorbita, on the inside we have the extraocular muscles with the intermuscular septum, okay. Anteriorly, the septum orbitally are the tarsal plate and the tarsal ligament and posteriorly it can merge with the central space. These are the boundaries of peripheral orbital space. Coming to the contents of this peripheral space. So, we have three muscles that is superior oblique muscle, inferior oblique muscle and the LPS. Remember this mnemonic LFT that is super LFT which I explained in the superior oblique fissure. Okay. So, the nerves are lacrimal nerve, frontal nerve and the trochlear nerve the superior and the inferior ophthalmic vein, 
the lacrimal gland and the lacrimal sac so these three are the contents of the superior ophthalmic uh, fissure if you remember so the contents of upper part and the lower part of the superior ophthalmic fissure will be there in the peripheral space along with that we have the muscles as well as the lacrimal gland and the lacrimal sac so in the lesions if you remember the contents it is very easy to remember the lesions also so there can be anything which is related to the lacrimal gland so lacrimal gland tumors can occur the capillary hemangiomas malignant lymphomas and even the pseudotumors so remember if there is a lesion in the peripheral uh, space it will lead to the eccentric proptosis and we are using this space to give the peribulbar block as well okay and this is approached by either anterior orbitotomy most of the time and even the lateral orbitotomy sometimes okay coming to the next space that is the central space it is also called as the muscular space or the posterior space or even the retrobulbar space so this is the space which i am explaining the space which is there behind the globe and inside the muscle cone that is the retrobulbar space the boundaries are as you can see from the outside we have the extraocular muscles as well as the intramuscular septa which is connecting them anteriorly the tenons capsule which is lining the sclera and posteriorly it becomes continuous with the peripheral space again so the contents of the middle part of the superior orbital fissure will be present in this space okay so remember the mnemonic nova that is nasociliary nerve abducens nerve optic nerve with its uh, meninges ophthalmic artery then we have central orbital fat and the ciliary ganglion so if you remember this that will be the contents of the central space so what lesions can occur in this retrobulbar space or the central space so again remember the contents so there can be optic nerve glioma neurulemomas solitary neurofibromas and the cavernous hemangioma any lesions of this central space will produce the axial proptosis okay and this space is utilized to give the retrobulbar injections even the retrobulbar hemorrhage can occur in this space okay we can approach this central space by lateral orbitotomy most of the time coming to the next space that is subtenon space as i told it's again a potential space that is the space which is present between the sclera and the tenons capsule there can be formation of abscess in this space we utilize this subtenon space to give the anterior and the posterior subtenons injections okay so this was a brief anatomy about the surgical spaces of the orbit hope this video is useful to all of you if you like my videos please do subscribe to my channel press the bell icon for further notifications please do like and share my videos thank you so much for watching